A warm welcome to everybody out there. My name is Stefan Frodichowski and uh, I welcome you to our next uh, webinar with the title Martingale Trading Strategies. And I welcome you as well in the name of JFD who made those webinars possible for all of us. So it's a pleasure for me to have you once again here uh, within that webinar, even it's more a webinar series, but um, yeah, it's really fine to have uh, so many people always here. Um, for the records, yeah, today we have the 24th of July, so um, the year goes on. And um, yeah, today's topic will be a little, maybe a little bit exciting. It's a little bit concept-like. Um, so you will see some more even strange approach about trading. Um, so yeah that's uh, what we do today but especially today i have to make the um, the remarks as always uh, especially the risk disclaimer i have to show here once again because what we talk today is really risky trading um, and that kind of approach is always inherent uh, risky uh, when we talk about martingale trading strategies so that risk disclaimer is even more important today than uh, within other webinars that is the one announcement i always do the other one is that you might may already download the slides of today's uh, webinar um oh i see maybe i have the wrong ones uh, let me see um, I hope not, so I uh, maybe they are in German, but uh, anyhow, if uh, there is something uh, wrong, then please remind my email address. You can always get in touch with me direct uh, via email, so um, therefore no problem. Um, I'm just uh, wondering, but I think I have not renamed the slides because there's a GE for German within, but uh, maybe I've simply not renamed uh, that file. So you can download the slides if you want, and uh, um, later I will show two Excel sheets. Uh, if you have interest in those, you can have them, of course. Just email me and um, yeah, then I will send them around. So today's topic is Martingale trading strategy. And um, in detail, I want to cover uh, four aspects today. Uh, the first one is a little bit to look what is uh, the real origin of Martin Gale uh, strategies because it has a long history. It's uh, known uh, since uh, centuries, even before we start uh, trading like we do today. So it's uh, a quite old concept and um, we will look to those origins as well. But having done that, and look a little bit around what does it mean, then we can try to set up a martingale trading concept in general. And um, there's a lot um, doing like, yeah, you, you buy if you lose. And you will hear a sentence like that quite often today. And you know that normally um, one would not do that. But today, Let's look into that kind of concept and how that works. And finally, um, because originally uh, Martin Gale's strategies are strategies with unlimited risk, and that sentence you will hear once again quite often today, therefore the question is valid to, to ask, can we tame that kind of concept? And indeed, there are possible possibilities to tame that kind of concept and finally i want to show or uh, share with you let's call it a live experiment uh, so i will switch to an mt4 account and uh, will run an m1 expert advisor um, with martingale in order to visualize the concept finally um, it's not meant that we will have uh, within five minutes a couple of euros earned but um, it's finally quite well to 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 see the kinds of concept. So Martin Gale, uh, the origin of Martin Gale is from um, the roulette table. So we talk about casino, and uh, therefore you <laughs> see already uh, that it's risky what we talk today. So the concept of Martin Gale 
trading games it's even meant um, not only at the roulette table but uh, that is the most uh, common uh, game to go for martingale strategies and the logic is in that kind of uh, in the original behavior is really really simple what you do is at the roulette table and um, don't mind that I, I will forget um, the, the green uh, zero um, that, that this is possible as well. So normally what you can do is you can bet on red or you can bet on black. Uh, so let's simply for simplicity reasons we forget that there's a zero and this one might be green. So you you either put your money on red or you put it on black and um, then the wheel goes around and yeah finally you have lost exactly what you put on the table or you get exactly the same amount um, back that's the complete logic of playing roulette um, and not playing the real uh, numbers on 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 the table and the concept or, or the, the rules are that simple. If you lose, you double your pool, you double your money for the next game. That's all. So if the first, let's call it a trade, because we are trader, um, is a loser trade, then you double your pool. That's all. If you finally win, because it might be that there are three losers in a row, uh, which always means you double already, if you finally win, that complete sequence is now a winner. And then you go back to your original pool. So the original money, let's say one euro or five euros, and that's all. That's the complete concept of playing Martingale uh, at the roulette table. And uh, nice anecdote here about that, um, because I will later go uh, to that uh, website just that you have an impression of uh, that there's a lot of uh, math behind um, on the German uh, variant of uh, that uh, Wikipedia article uh, there's meant that uh, yeah Giacomo, Giacomo uh, Casanova has been uh, a gambler with that kind of approach and uh, later you will see that you finally will lose all your money yeah and that happens for Casanova as well but he found other ways to survive and uh, now now I'm a little bit laughing and hopefully you too but let's uh, just that you to see uh, that you see that that kind of um, that kind of uh, system or the kind of article so um, that is mathematically described how it really runs that you double uh, every time you you go for and um, the calculations uh, you can maybe follow um, i can uh, recommend if you are able to read german the, the german one in this case is a little bit better or a little bit more um, impressive but anyhow uh, so you can find that uh, wikipedia article about um, martingale as well but what we now will do is we look for that kind of approach just from an excel point of uh, point of view so let me let me go here into that excel sheet and um what i have here prepared is what we exactly do at that roulette table and then you because we, we are trader we like equity curves um i i plotted exactly an equity line here as well so, but first, let me describe a little bit how that Excel sheet runs. And uh, if you have been within other webinars, you have seen already more or less the same Excel sheet already um, when we talk about trading statistics. But now I simply in, uh, introduced here that kind of doubling um, as well. So what we, oh, that's now in German, but anyhow. So the original pool is, uh, so the original money I, I call it invest or put on the table uh, is here five euros and uh, since i forgot um, that uh, green zero on the table my probability of uh, winning or losing is exactly 50 percent and then that excel sheet runs quite easy 
Um, so I have a random number here. And if that random number, uh, and the number is always between 0 and 1, uh, if that number is below 0.5, so our threshold here, um, then we have a winner trade. So that means um, comparing to the roulette table, we put our money on, on red and uh, indeed red was coming um, later. So what happens? Um, our, our pool, our money in was exactly five euros and we gained that five euros. And since my account or my, my wallet um, at the roulette table starts with uh, 200 euros, I have now 205. So, okay. So second, um, second round, second try, um, since we, the first trade was a winner trade, we go for uh, now for once again um, with five euros, but now we lose those five euros. Um, and you see account goes down to 200 again. And so it goes on. And as you see, there comes a, um, a couple of uh, winner trades or winner rounds here. And now here you can see exactly what happens if we lose. First time we have had that example already. So account goes down by five euros and then we double our, our pool and we lose once again. So that means our account goes down by 10 euros and so on and so on. But now next year we have a winner and you see what happens. Look to the equity line. Uh, and it's not magic, it's always looking like that. But you see already something uh, which is quite important to, to recognize. You see that there happen sometimes those deep cuts down. So we, we went really to the south and we, if I scroll down here a little bit, uh, we, we might see, oh yeah, we have already uh, been uh, at uh, a pool of 80 euro here in this case. So if that would have been a loser once again, we would have been at 160. And therefore we get equity lines which have those dips. Finally, there's a winner trade once again. And since we doubled always, we go back here um, straight up. But now, since I have an Excel sheet with random numbers, I can do simply what I always do with those random numbers. I simply pr press F9 and we get a new sequence. Let's see what happens. Oh God, it starts quite well. So we have here a total 100 of, of uh, um, those uh, sequences and our account went up. Perfect, very good. And then we have that kind of event. And now let's look realistic on that. That would mean after 93 trades or however we call it, we have lost all our money. So therefore the curve uh, crosses uh, the zero line. Um, so <laughs> indeed what I would have to do here is either to look whether I have additional money in my wallet or I have to leave the table. So, but you see what happens here. Uh, and you might compare that to trading as well. Exactly the next trade was the one and we went up again. So if you look to that kind of concept a little bit more from a mathematical point of view, you will see we always get that straight line upwards. But there's always such, not always, but in most cases we have those, those deep dips downwards. And let me that you should, uh, realize that a little bit more. I have here just a row of 100 sequences that you see how often that happens with uh, those kind of things. Let's go here for, for a longer sequence. So here we have uh, in total 1,000 of um, those bettings. And um, we start here now with uh, 1,000 euro. And OK, this equity line is still absolutely OK. Um, and you, you, your gain, your average gain, by the way, is two euro fifty here about, um, and that equity looks quite well. So, um, uh, if you would have that in your your account, in your trading account, I think you would not be that uh, unhappy. But now, 
let's do the same here once again. Press F9. And you see, okay, within 1000, two times I went bankrupt. Here, okay, only one time. Here, one time, and so on and so forth. Here I arrive. And you see, yeah, the concept is not that bad, some, but sometimes we do not survive. Formally speaking, we would always survive if we have unlimited resources. That means unlimited money. Because we can always go out of that dip by doubling for the next um, betting. So, to some extent, it looks quite interesting and nice. But on the other hand, let's be realistic. Who of us has unlimited resources? I don't have them. And you, I most probably think, you don't have unlimited money as well. Formally, uh, looking to the roulette table, there's um, another limit. <laughs> and since the, the, the casino owners know exactly that kind of strategy, they have done something quite uh, clever. Because there's a limit of betting at every roulette table at the world. That means, finally, maybe that limit is 1,000 euro, or maybe that limit is 10,000 euro. And that means you cannot double anymore if you come to that limit. And then, indeed, that strategy um, is ruined, is um, not any more valid. You need that doubling for that kind of sequence. So what we learn now here is, in principle, concept does not look that bad. But we have to think about how to manage those dips. And those dips should not be set that huge uh, that we go bankrupt. And indeed, there might be things how to tame it. And that is exactly um, not exactly the next topic, but we come to that as well. So first thing here is that we realize, OK, the, the, the Martingale approach, uh, with that Martingale approach, you go bankrupt by guarantee. And let me go quickly to the slide, because I have that on my summary here, intermediate, let's call it an intermediate summary uh, already. So on the one hand, the Martingale has nice, continuously increasing equity curves. OK, so that makes us as a trader absolutely curious. But the downside, as shown within that Excel sheet, is that that bankrupt Will come, will come by guarantee. And I mean really, in 100%. You may survive for 100 trades or 100 bettings. You may even survive for 1,000. But if you would do it every day, there will come a day after you earned already some money that you will lose all. And with all, I mean all. So... In principle, it does not look that bad, but we have to adapt and we have to tame it. But now let's look to it from a trading perspective. And let's let's um, put our knowledge of trading here um, into the concept as well. So we know from trading that every trade needs a stop loss. Okay, that's good. On the other hand, just from the Martingale approach, we know um, if we only introduce something like a stop loss, then the concept will break. So we have to be a little bit more tricky on that. So in our language, this would mean we have a fixed risk value in euro. And later you will see I, I use that as a final risk value or the panic stop loss or however you call that so um the first trade um for for that first trade that final risk value will be in a way that the stop loss is really far away but 
then we build up something like a pyramid, but on the other side. Let's see. You will understand perfectly, I think. So we know from trading we need a fixed risk value. Let's assume we just put it in euros. And what we want here is to gain a certain profit. That's from trading as well. We, we know take profits uh, are, are good. So let's think with every trade, we want to earn a, uh, a certain money, a value, amount of money. Finally, you will see that when we talk about trading, the risk-reward ratio of that kind of approach will be far below one in this case. But let's see how that works. Um, that kind of doubling in the, the roulette martingale approach, I don't think is good. Let's put that linear. What does it mean? So we open a trade and if we open that trade, and I will um, present you, you a sequence of those in an Excel sheet uh, and we do it together, then you will perfectly understand what I mean. Um, but we set us a limit after a certain loss, we buy again. So think about you buy the ducks and then uh, you encounter a loss. Well, not the trade is already in the stop loss. Stop loss is still far away, but uh, we, we, we have a long trade, ducks goes down, but what we now do is we buy again. And that means that our average entry price will go down, which is nice. But still, we think in trading aspects. That means we have a stop loss and we have to now shift that stop loss. We will do it in that Excel sheet. Before doing going there, um, please note what I'm now talking here is exactly uh, you get warnings about that in every trading textbook. And in principle, I agree with uh, to, to make your trades cheaper by rebuying uh, is not the brilliant idea uh, you, you might go for. But maybe we can do it professional and uh, then um, it will give us another picture of that. But normally, that is not a good advice to, to rebuy uh, if you encounter already losses. Let's do it together. Um, and in this case, um, later I will show examples uh, about Forex, but, um, but uh, that will be later. Uh, now, because for simplicity reason, I simply uh, go for an example with, uh, with the ducks. And with the DAX, I will do now the following. Uh, I take the DAX because then I can do every calculation um, uh, right uh, without any calculator. Uh, so what I assume is, is that one point, one DAX point uh, is simply one euro and all my trades now will be in one in units of one lot. You might think at JFD, you know, that you can buy 0.1 lots for ducks. I could scale down everything here. But uh, for simplicity reason, uh, I go for one lot and uh, one point is always one euro, euro. And then everything we can do um, straightforward. So let's assume we have those values. Uh, that we have a risk, a total risk of uh, 500 euros and that we want to reach a target of 100 euros. And you see risk reward ratio is far below one and that will be our rebuys. And that will be later the average. So let's go and let's simply start with a trade. We go for a long trade. Uh, that's now the direction uh, for that example. So we buy the ducks at 12,200. Okay, um, that is now our price entry. Sorry for all um, the jump words here, but anyhow, of course, our average price is uh, 12,200 12, as well, uh, no question, um, because we just have bought it. We have no floating losses, spread is zero, no commission, so for simplicity reason. But now, Let's think about our take profit and our stop loss. Okay, since one point is one euro, calculation is easy. Um, so what we know is if we buy at 12,200, then take profit is 100 points above because we have a target of 100 
uh, euro. Okay, got it. Stop loss is 500 points below, far away. Perfect. Now let's think in days or in whatever time unit or time frame. Um, I don't care really, but um, let's see. If DAX went up by more than 100 points, okay, then everything is clear. Our We reached our trade profit and uh, we, we are happy and everything is fine. But now let's think DAX goes down to 1,200 and uh, 130. So by by 70 uh, by 70 points, um, DAX goes down here. Okay, that means right now we would have um, a loss, a floating loss of minus 70 euros. Okay, and now that triggers the next one, because we have now a loss higher than 50 euros per lot because we bought first one lot and now we have since we only have one lot up to now and we have already an, a loss of 70 euros then we have to rebuy okay let's rebuy if we buy we buy for that uh, price here 12130 so that means our average price now is simply 12,165. So that's our um, average, uh, not a, uh, our average entry price. Now we have two lots. Since we now have two lots, our take profit comes towards the, the price. So what we have now is um, we have an average of that. And our take profit is now our risk, uh, our target value divided by the total number of lots we now have, and we have two. So that means our our take profit is now at twelve thousand two hundred fifteen. So hey, that goes down. So we need an increase of. 50 points now to reach our target. Good. And that is what exactly what we want to have, that the take profit comes towards us, into our direction. The downside is that since we are professional traders with stop losses, we have to manage our stop loss once again as well. So now since we have an average price here, our stop loss is our risk and also that divided by the number of lots we now have in our account. So that means um, stop loss went up to 11,915. Okay, once again, next day, let's see. Okay, if we, we ducks went up here to, to our target value, uh, everything is fine and our trade is managed. So in case the ducks might only go down, uh, let's say to 12, 120, um, then right now, what is our current loss? Okay, our current loss we, we have is our average price and our, uh, sorry, sorry, our average, our um, our current price um, minus the average price times our current lot size. Okay, we have now minus 90 in total, but per lot it's 45. And simply setting those kind of rules, in this case, I would not rebuy anything. I would go with that position since that would mean we have still um, the same number of lots. A take profit and stop loss would not be changed. If in case that number would be a little bit further down the road, 
then we would have to rebuy once again because because now our our floating loss would be minus 110 euros and that would trigger in that kind of logic and you can think about other logics as well but let's keep uh, it um, quite simple so if our average loss per lot is exceeding the 50 euro which is now the case we would rebuy once again for that price, 12,110. Okay, let's go for that. So we, we, we rebuy here and our average price went down once again. And now I can use simply that one here uh, and let me take out all the digits um, or nearly, nearly all the digits um, because otherwise we cannot see the numbers quite well here, but now we have it. And you see, once again, our take profit comes towards us. Now we need 30, 34 points to the north and our trade reaches target. But that, of course, our stop loss comes towards us as well. So you see how that concept in principle works. So you, you cheap you make your, your entry price cheaper in that long sequence here. Um, the, the amount of increase, the pullback now you need to reach a target comes closer, closer and closer. But on the other hand, the stop loss comes closer and closer and closer as well. So um, we still just playing around with that logic, be sure is nothing else than that Martin Gale approach. And you would lose everything with guarantee since we need something else. Just playing around with money management and um, lot size amounts cannot uh, save us. If it would be that simple, then it would be nice, but it's not that simple. What is good on that logic is that our take profit comes closer to us. So we need those pullbacks. Even so, in this case, we started a long trade in the DAX. DAX went down. Okay, of course, we encounter uh, floating losses here. But in order to recover and to hit our target of the trade, the number of points we need for the ducks going to the north becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So think about if the ducks is not going down in a straight line. It has from time to time those pullbacks. So even not that big pullback would already recover our trade. And finally, we would hit our take profit. But just looking to the numbers, you see exactly what we need. I call now a trade such a group of trades like here. So we need five groups hitting the target and then we can, um, we can have at least one of a loser trade and we would lose uh, 500 euros. So still, it's not the concept we can trade directly and we would earn money because just uh, from a mathematical point of view, it's still nothing else than what we have had at the roulette table. But now we can see maybe there are other things we can put into that basket here and then we get better. Let's see. Okay, let's go back to the slides. Um, so we, we can draw already some intermediate conclusions of that kind of system. So we have some pros and still so we have a, a, a con here. The pros is now, since we look from a trading perspective, we have a stop loss, we have a limited risk. That's always good. Um, and within one group trade, we can only lose a certain amount of money. Good. That is uh, well done. So 
in case we are on the losing side, so we, we, we open our trade, let's call it in the wrong direction. So as in my DAX example, uh, we open a long trade and DAX goes down. What we only, in brackets, need is a pullback. And then we can turn the trade already into a winner trade. That's good. But now think about a little bit more about what you have seen in thousands of charts um, you have seen in your life and uh, maybe on a daily basis. There are always faces with which we would call as a trader sideways faces. So price is just wiggling around, choppy market, no trends, it goes up, it goes down, whatever. That faces now become ideal for that kind of approach. Because if those straight behaviors into one direction are not too far, which would finally mean we would hit our group stop loss, with every pullback, we turn our trade into a winner trade nearly every time. But only... Um, um, if that straight behavior into one direction is not too straight in that one direction. Um, and what we can think about here is that if we are in those sideways phases, we might even go um, with long and short trades simultaneously. That will be it. Uh, a very uh, strange concept, but let's see what it means. So, um, still going for the cons. If the price goes constantly in one direction, then of course we will have a loser trade. And those trade lines will happen again. I will, we know those uh, will happen and I hope, uh, will happen always but maybe not that often. Let's, let's think about that. And now it comes to the taming of that approach. And I simply call it taming because I have no better word. But anyhow, so what are our criteria for advantages? So stop loss as a risk limitation, got it, uh, as always. We know we are trader, we have stop losses. But think once again about those sideways faces. Maybe there are special underlyings which have a tendency for, for that sideward markets, just going a little bit up, going a little bit down. And you may already have uh, some ideas of, of uh, special underlyings which, which will look like that. Think, for example, um, about Euro Swiss Franc. Um, normally, that's a quite boring uh, underlying not doing anything more or less. Might that be an ideal candidate for uh, that kind of trading approach? So now we do more or less exactly the opposite of what we normally do. Normally we look for trending underlyings which go in one direction. No, in this case, maybe a selection go for an underlying which, which is just wiggling around would be ideal. Because then we can do that, that absolutely strange concept of maybe going long and short simultaneously and manage the long side independent of the short side. Both get uh, risk value and then we do exactly what we uh, discussed with the DAX prices. And uh, of course, if now um, we, we don't have luck and uh, the price goes into one direction more or less straight. Uh, yeah, there's one trade will be a winner and because uh, that one uh, which is, was in the right direction and the other one will be the loser. And um, in case like uh, risk-reward ratio of five, um, finally, that would mean we will lose money. But if that happens not that often, hey, now it becomes interesting again. And on the other hand, think about what we discussed, for example, for power candles or EMAs, I think that will come um, in later webinars. But let's rethink about power candles. What did we discuss and what, would be, what did we discover? We discover that there are 
some edges, some probability advantages if we have those kind of power candles that um, we, we see, hey, good, um, now we have an edge into one direction. So let's go for a trade exactly into that direction and manage that trade by this kind of approach. And now what is good, we have an edge, a probability advantage, but that martingale approach makes us a little bit more error tolerant. So even if the price goes down, let's say once again think about a long trade, the price goes down uh, once again uh, and uh, we have a long trade. Since we rebuy and we do that kind of sequence, we might even get that trade still into the profit region. Good. That's both is interesting. Looking for special underlines and looking still for trading edges because even mathematically, if we have an edge in that concept of martingale, then the number of big losers will go down. We can simulate that first. Two Excel sheets come now. Let's go for that kind of concept here once again. Let's think we have we have a probability advantage of uh, maybe uh, 0.6. So um, we have yeah a real probability advantage. And now let me simply press sometimes F9, and uh, we look how often we survive within that sequence here. And you see, now was the first time that we would not survive. But now the tricky part comes simply by applying risk management. And looking for a trading edge might be a good idea to get that kind of concept uh, really working, like within that Excel sheet. So even normally we will, such a trade, we would end with a loser trade. That trade, now we can turn into a winner trade once again. That is trading with edge. And then we can do um, a selection or we, 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 we use that bias for a long or a short uh, trade. But we can do something else. You remember that I said, hey, are there currency pairs which have a tendency for sideward markets and uh, I know we we have hundreds of, of uh, numbers here but but let me explain and then we uh, simply sort the table and you will quickly realize how we can already uh, get an edge by a selection of uh, the right underlines so what I have done is um, I look for h1 data so hourly based data and I asked myself, um, and I wrote a, a, a short program for that, within 120 candles. Okay, well, let's do it the other way around. So we have, we go back into the history at a certain point. And then we ask, within the next 120 candles, what was the typical maximum distance to the north and the typical minimum distance. So um, there is a range of, of uh, that price uh, creating by, created by the next 120 candles. And I did everything here in uh, relative, so in, let, let's call it percent uh, wise. That means the typical range to the north is 1% and the typical range to the south is 1%. Good. And you see already, um, if I go down here as a list, in this case to, to gold, hey, it's double the value. So you see already gold is, is, is more creating bigger ranges here uh, within 120 candles. And that's the average uh, for the last uh, 14 years. Um, okay. And let's see how we can go with that kind of concept here because we can ask another question how often 
if we start our consideration at a certain point and we look for the next 120 candles, how often do we come back to our point of interest? So the let's call it the start position. How often do we cross that level once again? That would mean the price went, for example, up and then came down again to my original point. And now let me sort that table uh, for that number, that number um, average count cross. And then we will see, we get a clear picture of our underlines. And what you can see is, okay, let's go down here the road. Within 120 candles, in average, over the last 14 years, the Euro Swiss 4 has been the most, uh, also the best one, always coming back. And on the other side, we see currencies like British pound, US dollar, Euro, US dollar. So, and here down the road, others would be New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, and so on and so forth. So, simply sorting my underlyings to that criteria coming back that's more or less that, that kind of criteria how often i come back to my point of interest uh, within 120 candles which by the way is uh, exactly one week so you see that euro swiss franc is much more often coming back to that point so that kind of currency or that kind of underlying is much more um, stable because it goes up and comes back so for that long short simultaneously concept those would be ideal candidates down that road exactly on the other side would be the one hey we only trade into one direction because they are more trendy 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 let's call it that way um, and then you will see pairs like, uh, especially those with um, Japanese yen, um, those kind of currency have a tendency for trend behavior, going in one direction and not come back that often. The difference between those underlyings is quite huge. So we have now candidates for more um, straight behavior. Uh, on, on the upright of the table and here down the road we have those candidates for wiggling around going long long short simultaneously and then we can use that and now it takes me um, some seconds uh, and I hope I will be fast enough here um, to to get it uh, because unfortunately I didn't open those uh, documents early enough but give me a second because I can tell you that I have already some some um, equity curves out of that concept. And uh, let's go for like, maybe just um, let's start uh, one second, one second. Ah, let's go for it. Yeah. Um, so we go for long, straight, uh, long, short, uh, simultaneously. And let me just pick one example here. Um, and those equities here, we would get finally. Still, we have um, equities, and that's for, for more than 10 years, following that kind of concept. And you see in, in violet here, um, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, hey, works quite well. Sometimes we hit our our uh, final stop loss and then we get those steep um, uh, going south in our equity. But more or less, it goes stable upwards, just with that kind of concept. And if you look for the selection of, of currency pairs, hey, it's more or less exactly the table we talked before. So it really looks uh, quite well. That's, by the way, the the, in, the combined equity of uh, all of these. And just other examples that you can see, hey, the kind of concept 
it's definitely uh, not that bad and um, it really looks quite well. So let me summarize here, trend behavior on the upside of the table, not trend behavior here on the downside and candidates for that uh, long short um, simultaneously. Um, since I have a question here, just a second, um, uh, to, to bring that a little bit more transparent, uh, just uh, a second. Uh, that kind of concept with uh, long short, um, I have something here which I can show you for that. And that makes the concept maybe hopefully a little bit more visible but still uh, no problem because what we have is we have that um, the life experiment what we will uh, do um, in a second so no here we go and now we can look here for uh, that concept just a second and here we are so let's go for this example um, that we have really equity lines of that kind of concept just for one um, for one currency pair and that is New Zealand dollar Canadian dollar which is um, within that list as well and you see what happens with those kind of equities sometimes and those equities are with floating therefore we still have those spikes you remember those spikes down are always um, or make already the concept of martingale strategies uh, quite visible and uh, take that as a hint if you look for um, my fx books um, and uh, look for other people trading whenever you see quite well performing um, uh, equity lines always ask for the equity and not look for the balance because only in the equity you can see those spikes so um, and if they are too huge then be careful so you see how it works from time to time we we suffer our panic stop loss our overall stop loss meant um, for our risk calculation but most of the times we can recover those spikes and we get, go for those kind of equities really going north, 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 north um, in a very good way. But this kind of concept going short and long simultaneously will only work if we are in those sidewards phases. And in this case, we have a currency pair which is perfect for, for that kind of approach. Good. Um, I mentioned that I want to show you that even live. And now we go here for um, a demo account and uh, still this is in the test phase and um, I, I, I will make an experiment right now here as we speak. Uh, only a couple of days I have the expert advice already uh, thanks to Peter Müller who has created that. Um, but let's see how that concept works. And now we do it live, not within those charts. Even those are interesting as well because we have already groups of trades. Um, and then finally those trades have been profitable as well. Uh, but now let's go just live. And I go for a currency pair which is mm, extremely mm, not suitable, uh, but uh, in this case, I like it because I, what I now need in order to, to show you the concept is simply I want to have, let's call it action. Um, in this case, normally, uh, finally, by the way, this strategy will not run on M1, but I now opened it here in an M1 window. And now you see what happens here. Let's go for live. So we opened two trades, one short trade and one um, long trade and I, I uh, repeat myself now uh, euro Japanese yen is normally not a good uh, um, currency pair for that but 
let's go for that uh, because normally uh, we have a little bit more action there and hopefully we get en enough action during the next minutes during talking here um, that you see how the strategy really works. What you can see here already is, okay, we have to take profits and there's one take profit um, for the long trade, which is here, and there's one take profit um, for the short trade exactly here. And now if we get a little bit more um, action here, at least in one direction, we can look for those rebuys. Uh, up to now, it has not happened because the price is still at the same level. So therefore, there's no rebuy. And both sides, long and short, we, we manage independently. But we can do, in the meantime, something else. We can look right now when we opened absolutely the first trade where my... Um, there we are. When we opened just the first trade with 0.01 lot in this case, the stop loss is far away, really far away. And that stop loss we would not reach um, even not within in months uh, from now. But that's how it should be. Starting with a stop loss, which is really far away, and you can see for this stop loss, I have a value of a risk of, and now I hope I get a number here, but I can tell you the number. Um, the number is 200 euros, as you see here. So 200 euros is my panic stop loss. So that is the total amount of money I have now on risk. Since I have two sides, it's 400. If now a next trade would be opened, which is unfortunately not the case here because we have not enough movement in one direction, then therefore let me show you a little bit what would happen with my uh, stop losses. Since we cannot see it here, um, since we don't open a new trade, it's not the best timing to do the webinar uh, in at hours which are quite calm, but let me simply uh, put the line here. So if we now, because that is the stop loss of the short side, if we would now open a next short trade, which would be once again 0.01 lot, then the stop loss for each of those 0.01 trades would go down exactly to the half here. And then further down the road to one third and so on and so forth. So you see we stop loss would come two words to my price, okay. But on the other hand, my take profit would come towards my average entry price as well. Let me give it a second, uh, but um, I think still there's no not enough action, unfortunately, um, that uh, we don't have a rebuy here. Um, let me look whether I can find um, a, a nice example, maybe out of those M5 uh, charts. And once again, finally, that kind of strategy would not run on those tiny, tiny um, uh, things, but okay, I will at least give it a try uh, to look to British pound uh, Swiss franc here, uh, but now we have already too many trades open uh, in order to discuss exactly uh, what I would like to discuss here, but at least what you can see, um, the take profits values are already quite close. So now what we need is maybe a, a, one move to the north, then all the short trade, uh, all the long trades would uh, go to profit. Maybe we get a one move to the south, then all the short trades would go for profit. That's how this kind of concept always looks like. Normally, we get those group trades, and when those group trades have a couple of red lines and a couple of um, green lines, then the group of trades is finally a winner. 
uh, only if we have only one color, uh, then, then we would have hit our panic stop loss. Still, that account, and uh, up to now, it's just test phase of those expert advisors in order to get that strategy up and running. Um, will run completely differently uh, finally not with that kind of settings not with that kind of time frame but we know now that there are currency pairs which have a good um, perspective for that kind of approach and we can go for all the other approaches as well like using the power candles or other um, trading edges as well with uh, some probability advantage into a certain direction and then we would not go for that long short uh, group, just uh, only in one direction. Still no movement. Um, so um, uh, maybe what I can show instead, because here exactly a minute ago, uh, a trade ended uh, in a profit and um, for Euro, US dollar, um, we have had that kind of sequence here. Um, the initial trade has been started here. At that point, we opened a long and short trade. And since the price went down, there was a rebuy into the long direction as well. All those, those um, little um, arrows here showed that we have a, a rebuy. Then my short trade already was in take profit. Okay, good. And then we got that pullback here. And finally, that sequence of long trade have been profitable as well the sum of all the, the lines so you see we have a couple of green lines uh, showing that we have profitable individual trades and one red line but uh, i um, look for those trades always as a group of trades and um, that group of trade was profitable um, at the very end the Japanese yen still not working, but um, anyhow, uh, that's the moment um, markets calm down. And if market totally calms down, then we will not have anything what happens. Good. So let me let me go for the summary now. Um, so what Martingale Strategies is about, um, first thing to mention, it's a no-go. The bankruptcy will be with guarantee um, if you just play that game of doubling uh, without any limit uh, then you know what will happen and i showed it several times in the excel sheet and i hope you remember always that just going with that strategy without anything else is not good but we have now seen a few things which tame that martingale concept. And what you see here is that, of course, we always need a stop loss, as always. So as for all the trades we do, so stop loss is a must. But now that kind of concept becomes especially interesting for sideways faces. And, you, and I can tell you the number, most of the time, um, underlines are in more sideways markets than in trendy markets. So we have a good concept now for that sideways moves. And then we can go, for example, with that long short simultaneous uh, strategy. And there are other ways uh, what we can do. Uh, think about there's a long range. And then if we would come down to the, to the lower end of the range, then we would um, trigger long trades. And on the other side, uh, we would trigger short trades. Even a cool concept as well. And the good thing is, even if you go for trading edges like trend behaviors, um, so we open the trade into the direction of a trend, for example, um, then our group trade becomes more error tolerance, um, or gets more error tolerance, because if we have such an edge, uh, then a pullback is already enough to bring that trade into a winner trade as well. So it's a cool concept, but still be careful. Whatever you do with something like Martingale, use it 
up to now more from a conceptual um, perspective but have a look to to uh, Zeitwert's faces and those kind of underlines which really behave uh, more like that and due to that uh, statistical analysis of a couple of underlines you saw there are quite good underlines for that kind of approach at all so very nice very interesting i hope you enjoyed um the webinar let me quickly before going uh, to the end, have a look whether my my Japanese yen has opened the next trade. No, unfortunately not. We're still not really going away from the price of entry. So therefore, there's no need to rebuy anything, either the short nor um, the long trade. So uh, it seems like it will stay there forever, at least up to now. Now we get a move since I want to, to finish the webinar, um, but you see now it happens already uh, the other side. So life experiment is not that that good, uh, but the market is now too calm um, for any moves. So, um, but I hope you understood the concept and uh, take it conceptual, take it as an additional input and hopefully uh, with the next webinar from me or my colleagues, uh, you are here once again. So see you, have a good time, and at least for today, a good evening. Goodbye. Bye-bye.